Hello and welcome to this video series. I am Buzz, a documentary filmmaker. And in this series, I'm interviewing colleagues um, from all over the world on their latest uh, documentary film projects um, so that we can all learn from it. So this will be a long format um, doc interview where I'm just basically talking with colleagues about their craft, their process, and why they chose a particular topic uh, to make a film on. Um, and this, in this first episode, I am going to talk to Michael Jenke and Ryan Bauman from Canada, who just finished their film and released their film, uh, We the Bereaved, which is a documentary short uh, about grief. Um, if you haven't seen the film, please go and watch that first. I'll um, make sure that there's a link to the film uh, in the description below and uh, if you have done that then um, well let's just uh, enjoy the interview i hope you like it if uh, you have any feedback for me on how i'm doing then please let me know in the comments and i'll hope i just hope you enjoy it so first off congratulations on the on the film i i absolutely loved it um how have the responses to the film been so far oh man you go first. Um, no, it's been it's been really really cool. I mean, definitely in a way bigger and um, and uh, there's there's been more responses than we even expected. Yeah. And uh, yeah, lots of people lots of people just really interacting with it and sharing it and feeling and really connecting with it, which has been really really cool. Yeah. More than just um, yeah, like go going out of their way to to say how the films impacted them even finding things like some healing and some some help and really uh, seeing it as a resource and sharing it with their other friends who have uh, uh, maybe suffered some sort of or gone through some sort of loss of a loved one and uh, it's been a really kind of helpful tool for people which is really more than we could have ever hoped for so and I guess what we were yeah. hoping for <laughs> yeah but you never yeah you know it's to build on that you never totally know what's going to happen right the the from our very first meeting to the time that we actually posted it online was almost two years. So when you're sort of living with something for that amount of time, it was about a year for production, post-production, and then a year in festivals. But even in the festival thing, it's, it's still kind of not public. So you're kind of waiting, you don't really know how people are gonna respond. So yeah, it's been really, really incredible since uh, since it went live, so yeah. Could you explain like how, how did this film come about? Because this is not something, well, did you just dream, did, did you just wake up in the morning and just go like, oh yeah, let's make a film about grief? Yeah, <laughs> not, not really. really. <laughs> uh, it's definitely, I mean, it is that it's, it's, uh, it's not, you know, on the top of even, even our discussion in, in, you know, our society and, and so it's not often the first thing that people think about doing even as a passion project. Yeah. Um, but it really came out of uh, a relationship that we both have with um, a woman who is our executive producer. Uh, her name is Michelle and she, um, she's a bit of a philanthropist and cares a lot about uh, different things related to related to things like this, um, grief especially, and she and she uh, really had this idea. Basically, kind of gave us the guidelines. I'd like to do something on grief and death, uh, and I want it to be a documentary, yeah. and um, and something that could kind of help people. And so we were like, huh, okay. And so we weren't even totally we weren't even totally sure whether we're like. You know, is yeah. is this for us, and is there a way that we could do this that that we could get excited about, yeah. and um, and 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 because it's not born out of like our own immediate desire to uh, to to put something out there, yeah. uh, were were we the right people to do this, and and uh, mm -hmm. so we just had a few a few kind of things to kind of talk about and think about, and um, and yeah, af after we did that for a little while. It, if it felt right for sure. Yeah. 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 It was an interesting, like you said, um, it wasn't like we woke up and like, Hey, I have an idea. Yeah. I mean, we're very much like, I personally am very much used to doing projects based on those 
types of inspirations where either it's something that's sort of lived in your mind for a while or something that's sort of creeped up or you see a subject or subject matter and it kind of is like, hey, I really want to pursue this. This was almost like a commission where um, Michelle said, hey, we want you to do this. And um, yeah, it was, it was kind of, even at the first, um, when, when the conversation first came up, it was very like, yeah, like what? How do we approach something so intense and personal mm -hmm. when it's not necessarily coming from us originally? Um, and that was a big discussion that we had, I think for like, man, weeks, I feel like we kind of yeah. went over that issue of like, how do we approach this? Can we do this genuinely when we're being asked to do it sort of like from an external uh, instigator? So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that um, it would be different um, when you would be the guys like with the idea? Does it make sense? Like, is it like, because it's more, well, it's not really a commission, but like, is there a difference in how you're approaching it to, to when it would just come out of you, like intrinsically, would that change? Hmm. I mean, in a way, I think that one way that it was different was we felt uh, like in a positive way, uh, I felt a lot of, and we talked about that a little bit, like a certain sense of responsibility because it was, sort of asked of us and also because the subject matter is so intense and potentially so personal. Um, I think that sometimes when I have my own ideas, I kind of just am blindly confident about it and I just go, you know what, this is something I'm like inspired or passionate about. I'm just gonna go and do it and I'll like get through it. But this was way more like mm -hmm. talking about like, okay, like how do we approach this very openly and respectfully and like, just honor the subject matter and that responsibility of being asked to address this. That's kind of how I think it was different for me, for sure. Yeah, I think we definitely took a slightly more literal approach with with different things. We couldn't get too um, artsy and 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 in, in terms of just letting things always be, you know, interpreted however they were to be interpreted. We we took we were a little more straight and, and to the point at times, just because it felt like we were dealing with very uh something that was very personal for for people and that responsibility felt pretty big and we didn't want it to be ambiguous as to what the motive was or or anything yeah. like that we really yeah. yeah so both the subject matter and being kind of commissioned to do it i guess yeah those those both played a part in that yeah if i look at your approach then um you can well it's 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 half interview half is it well? How, how would you call it? Fictional yeah. narrative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. So, so how did you come to that point? Because while you can do well, if the, if the brief was, uh, yeah, could, could you do a documentary on grief? Then obviously you are still like you have so many different options on like how you're going to take on this subject which is a big subject yeah. right like yeah. everyone's grieving yeah at some yeah. point in their lives it's yeah. like this one mm -hmm. universal thing that will get us all at some point so how how do you approach that how did you like you get into more detail and how that discussion progressed no, i mean it, it definitely yeah. progressed it changed yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah quite a bit yeah it was yeah. a process yeah. even more so i think than like you know when you typically maybe approach like even a mini doc uh, on a subject you usually like, or um, sorry, on like a person, you usually kind of have a more like straightforward process of like, okay, we'll interview them, we'll show this, you know, we'll cut that together. This was way more of like, we took months of just like discussing how to even, if we even interview. There was a point where yeah. we were, where there was a point where we thought, you know what, let's find these people and let's only interview them with audio, almost like a podcast and then come back to the visuals later in some form. Like there were so many versions that we sort of thought or, or talked through of how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was, it was a huge process, like months before we even, yeah, before we even had a clear idea. Yeah, I think, I think it was, um, there's definitely that, that part of it that was, or that really formed it going forward. At first I remember we had talked about having like a single storyline and kind of ju jump through 
jump from hearing about these people to kind of one storyline that's mm-hmm. somehow touched on different parts of what you go through. Mm-hmm. And it just didn't feel big enough for the and and diverse enough yeah. for what we were actually yeah we had a whole um, script written like we yeah, had a we whole a like whole basically sh- very like narrative short film script mm-hmm. and that was like you know throughout the process i feel like it was like okay we're going this way mm-hmm. and then we'd get to a certain point on that direction be like uh one of us would say ah, i'm not feeling it something's not right and we'd be like okay let's back it up so even with that it's like we were like okay we're gonna do this like a short and you know, all of a sudden there was that point where one day you called me when I was driving was like, I don't know about this. And then I was like, yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. Um, it was, yeah, it was sort of like this. I felt like we were kind of like going these different directions, looking for the right one. And we kept sort of like finding bits of what was right, but having to like come back. Um, and then even to back up uh, slightly, uh, we did the interviews, um, mm-hmm. and then after we were done the interviews, then we approached the rest of the visuals. So that was yeah. like, that was very clear. Like we did all the interviews. We said, you know what, let's just capture these people's stories. And then once we know those things, then let's talk about the visuals. So that mm-hmm. did come in a pretty clear order. And some of the visuals, some of the narrative pieces, the, the women, the woman going for the walk, uh, you know, having to box up your life, the, mm-hmm. the woman boxing up. Uh, clothes in her in her kids room yeah. who who would have passed uh, that that sort of fictional story was based off of actual interview moments that were said in the film yeah. um, or that were said by our interviewees which was pretty cool too as well as the element that really shaped I mean what we had hoped from the beginning which was you know Leanne says in the film the uh, grief is so hard because it's, it's essentially to the effect of like grief is so hard because life with that person um, is so good. Or she, she says it's a testimony to what you had and that it was real. And um, so that life is real, that there is beauty to life. We had, we knew that we had to sort of embrace that as part of the narrative, that it couldn't be all uh, just the, the pain of grief. There's also the beauty of life that makes the pain of grief difficult. And so that, that kind of, meshing kind of became a big part of the totally the narrative element yeah, yeah totally what i know from my experience uh when i conduct interviews is that um it's one thing for people to to get people to tell their stories but it's another to do that to get them to do that right for the film did you tell them like okay these are the rules of the interview or was it just like I'm going to ask you a few questions and whatever you get back to me is like, that's what we have. Yeah. We kind of, we didn't really establish any rules. No, you were very, Ryan was very specific with the questions. You kind of went really on that. You were very, um, you were very, uh, you felt strongly that the questions needed to have a bit of openness to them. Right. And that in our interviewing process, um, what happened just to quickly preface that was, um, me and Ryan, because we had, man, we had like 12 people that we interviewed within the yeah. course of a day and a half and the interviews, we let them go kind of like as long as they needed to go. We had a lot of time given. So that was a big part of it was like giving room for what might happen. Yeah. And then we switched back and forth, uh, Ryan and I just to like, help with a bit of the fatigue of like being so engaged with people for that long. Yeah. Um, but your, but your whole idea was to really give room for people to answer and not necessarily try to do what maybe as interviewers on other projects, we have that instinct to keep digging further yeah. in. You were very strong about ask a question and just let people, mm. let people bring out what comes out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we definitely, it was a bit of a learning experience too. And I, I think the edit, to to remember that we had we had probably seven hours of interview footage that we then distilled down to three two minute pieces two and a half minute pieces right so we were able to take we were able to take pieces that they said that were in an answer to a different question and group those all together to make it to make it fit in a way um a big part of the interview and and the comfort level Mm -hmm. we wanted it to feel very 
uh, real and genuine and even what's in the film like there we, we try to keep a lot of those pauses and a lot of where people don't even finish their thoughts in the film we thought that that was really important rather than keeping it super uh, polished or whatever but yeah. we also like right down to the way that we laid out the day we knew that we, we wanted enough time so that the person could come in there wasn't another person sharing their story. You know, we weren't rush. We were never rushing anybody. And yeah. down to the venue that we chose, it was more of like a music hall, and we set up in in the um, in the kind of yeah the, the band area or whatever, rather yeah. than shooting at a big studio where they're in, you know you're walking into this giant warehouse type yeah. space and it's huge. It was very small and intimate, yeah. which really lent to I think the feeling of that in the interviews. Yeah. And then the set design and, and how, how you actually place the, the people in, in the room, the, there's obviously a plan to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that was, um, we had a couple ideas early on about like maybe a backdrop or like seeing, you know, sort of like the wide enough shot that we see grip equipment. We thought about that a little bit. And then I have a friend who's actually um, an art director on a TV show here in Calgary. And he had done a lot of like building theater sets as well as doing stuff on the TV. And um, I, we sort of like pitched the idea to him a little bit of like, hey, we wanna build something. We had a meeting and we sort of brainstormed the idea of like maybe a room or a hallway or like some sort of like set piece that we are interviewing within, but we know that it's a set. And yeah, then that's so sort of kind of abstract. Yeah, not so specific that it's like trying to be a location, but something that just like made the interview shot just have more to it. Yeah. And then even like the idea of this hallway is we, we actually also intended to shoot B-roll around that interview set um, that we never ended up using. But the whole yeah. idea was that maybe this hallway was, in reality, you can't totally tell in the shot, but the uh, the hallway actually becomes smaller. It's kind of an optical illusion um, where if you were to walk through it, the, the roof is getting shorter as you get to the back. Um, and it sort of was also to create this idea of sort of, uh, I don't know, not claustrophobic, but just yeah. sort of this, uh, this, this disappearing horizon or like pulling us back. I don't know. Hard to explain. I get it though. I can, I've kind of had this feeling while, while watching it. it was like, oh, this makes so much sense to, to place people like in the center of that kind of converging space. I don't know. It, yeah, it, converging. It, to me, yeah. it didn't make sense. So, you know, I, I got that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> And then the other thing, because you used the second angle, right? Or that, that was, you shot it with two cameras? We shot it with two cameras, but in the film, it's only one. Yeah, we have two angles <laughs> in the, in the, uh, in like the raw cuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, that was, I think that was, I don't know, who, who really felt strongly about that? I think we got to the edit mm -hmm. and that, that straight on shot that was wider just felt so much stronger and more interesting than when we, you know, uh, that second angle is more like a traditional close up um, that you would, you know, often use for an interview. And there was something about that wide shot that just felt more, I don't know, dramatic felt. I don't know. It felt right. Well, there's also the uh, I, I think a big part of it was that we didn't again trying to keep the, the real authentic feeling. It, once you cut to that other mm -hmm. angle, we could be hiding something. Yeah. And so yeah. we liked the fact that we couldn't hide anything by sitting on that one. And it was, we didn't want to cut because we didn't want there to be any question as to, oh, did they actually say that like that? Or um, yeah. we wanted to just sit, really sit with these people yeah. as if you're sitting there in the chair, just looking at them and they're just flashing before your eyes, yeah. you know? Yeah. That, that was a, a big part of it was trying to yeah. stay away from covering up too much. Yeah. 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 Or leaning on that second angle. Leaning on yeah. it, yeah. And then you also change to, I'm just going further into the technical stuff, yeah. but more like you also change aspect ratios. Yeah. Um, but, but is that just as a, as a way of explaining what's real and what's like uh, more uh, uh, fiction? Yeah to, yeah, to separate those two worlds, yeah. I think is the main one. You're absolutely right. Yeah, to kind of go between the interview and our narrative pieces and to like subconsciously create a jump mm -hmm. for sure yeah. yeah i think the the four by three aspect ratio in the in the interviews was really 
you know, it, it felt a little more home video-y, you know, it felt, it did have a different feel. And then we wanted it to sit inside of the, mm. inside of the frame so that when we go to the, to the experience of it, boom, we're, we're really wide and we're, you know, it gets bigger. It doesn't just do a different crop. It really yeah. crops out and we're in this world. Yeah. And so it was, it, we really wanted to, yeah, establish those yeah. two different worlds and, pretty strongly. And partly too is just like, being obsessed with two, three, five aspect ratio. It's like, okay, yeah. how do we like make this stand out more when we cut to it? Yeah, totally. Yeah, we didn't want it to be uh, all two, three, five. Yeah. Um, and then, um, so, so what, so talk me through the process because you then, so you have your interviews done. Did you already know by then what the narrative scenes would be, like the fiction scenes would be, or did you first, go full on got the 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 interviewees uh up until you uh, up until the point that you actually have the story and then you know write out every particular scene that you wanted to capture after it was a little bit of both yeah yeah like we we definitely um yeah so so we shot the interviews we had a good idea of what they were we started to chop them up and that was the benefit even from the beginning was like hey we have the time yeah. it's rare that we get to just get interviews and then go, Hmm, now what do we want to yeah, do? Well, yeah. And so we really wanted to embrace that rather than, you know, lock ourselves in right away because we had the option to do that. So, yeah. um, so we did get it. Like we said, we kind of had that one narrative storyline already thought out and that was what we were kind of planning to do after. Yeah. And it was probably, I don't think we started shooting and we wanted to shoot in the summer. Yeah. The interviews like we did in March, we, we did yeah. all the interviews in March. And then I think that we didn't shoot any B-roll till May, May, like later May. Yeah. yeah. So we had that in between where you were cutting, we mm -hmm. were brainstorming. We were both, Ryan primarily edited the project, but then during the, uh, the interview stage, I was also like listening to all the raw interviews and writing notes. Yeah. And like, that's a big part of like that B-roll came from like, okay, someone in the interview would say something and it would sort of cue this idea, like for example, the the boxing up someone's life. Barry talked about that. He talked about him and his wife yeah. literally packing up all of their son's belongings after he passed away. So we thought, you know what, this is a really this is a really strong image, like just visually. This is something that not going through that myself really strikes me in my mind when I hear that. So we're like, you know what, let's make that one of our scenes, like directly. But then on the other side of it was we heard a lot of the more like emotional and like philosophical side of what people were saying. So we wanted to lean into like, okay, let's shoot, let's shoot nature stuff. Let's shoot land. Let's try to find stuff that is inspiring um, mm -hmm. visually that has that, I mean, truly that more, um, yeah, sort of like that existential feel. Yeah. Really so yeah, it was, a, captured it was the emotional element. Yeah. It was a real mix. Yeah. yeah. It was a real mix of that. And then we did, so, so at, even during that, I think you were still chopping stuff down. Mm -hmm. And then after all that additional B-roll was shot, um, then was like the real, then you really started to like break everything down. Yeah. Find the story, like find the interview storyline and start dropping in all the sections of, uh, of B-roll. Yeah. 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 And then even then we did the, th we did three uh, production days. And then after that, we went out and shot more nature stuff and one more yeah. smaller production day um kind yeah, of basically a just little us. further away again trying to get diverse landscapes yeah. and uh just trying to make something feel bigger like it could encompass more of the experience of of what more different people would go through yeah 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 i thought that was really powerful and uh in the, like and on the in the whole film is like you really feel that there's so many elements in play mm. and everything has its meaning but you kind of, I feel that you're almost democratizing it by not really explaining or, or mm. like it's, it's not entirely clear w why I'm looking at it, but yeah. that's, that's part of the, the, the beauty of it. it. Is that a good way of explaining it? Totally. Yeah, totally. yeah you, think... you have to figure out what it means to you in that exactly. moment, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That was definitely like, I think that was a huge part of us dealing with the, okay, we've got hours of footage and these people literally bearing their souls like some of the hardest things they've experienced and then some of the most beautiful 
um, thoughts and feelings coming out of that. And how do you, it's like we knew like we didn't have the ability to make a feature film. Like this is too great of a task. We're, we're trying to make this into a short. And I think part of it was going a little bit more, I don't want to say ambiguous, but, but leaving out some of those details you mentioned yeah. so that people can hear it and let it speak to them um, personally somehow. That was mm -hmm. the hope anyways. Yeah. Yeah, big. I, there is there was a little bit of motive even in some of that narrative stuff or totally. some of the nature stuff, yeah. with like like the intro. I guess our 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 motive behind showing that at the beginning with the waterfall was this idea of how is you know that combination between painful pain and beauty and and we we kind of opened on and people talked about how you know it would you know, this grief, you, you all of a sudden just go, it, it comes over you and it, it takes over your life. And so mm -hmm. we wanted, uh, we, we kind of drop into this waterfall scene mm -hmm. in this kind of dark, it's a very dark, but beautiful forest. Mm -hmm. And we, we hear this waterfall and then it's rushing and it gets heavier and heavier and heavier until you're kind of, and we push right into the water as if it's this wave, yeah. you know, in the film, um, one of the people talks about it being like a like a wave that rushes over you you know yeah, so yeah. like things like that were it's like a wave it's you're going right in and it's totally. it's all coming coming in and knocking you over i mean and that was a big part of the editing process too is like for example then there's another point in the film where one of our um subjects leanne she talks about she's trying to express what grief is like and mm -hmm. her explanation is it's like breathing it's something that you do without yeah. thinking and we had some we had some great nature stuff that had this element of like the breeze or like wind on some grass. Yeah. And so then all of a sudden there's this beautiful moment of like you you're here talking about breathing and now we incorporate wind and breath and like the visual elements. Mm -hmm. And so dark that shots was, and light shots. And, yeah. Yeah. So that was definitely very specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you both are pretty firm believers of small crews, right? Yeah, I mean, on this project, the, the only time we had like a proper crew would be some of the B-roll that we shot where yeah. we did have, we did have like grip, lighting, camera assistant, us, makeup. Um, but on some of the stuff we shot, like in the, with the, um, one of our characters is like a girl hitchhiking and she's at the yeah. waterfall. So that was just me and Ryan going out yeah. Um, and doing that like really slim. Um, and then again, even in the interviews, like we did have a camera assistant and sound and makeup, but then it was just us. I mean, relatively small, definitely. Yeah. And like, that's how we normally work with like maybe a couple people. It's very rare that I have an opportunity to have like a proper crew, maybe on a short film here or there, but, but the norm is definitely like mm -hmm. me and maybe one other person. Mm -hmm. So this was a, I think this was a real balance. There were times where we're like, I think we really need, we need the hands. And then there's times where it's like, let's keep it way more slim, especially the interviews. You know, you consider if there's a bunch of crew hanging around that's, that is necessary to set up, but maybe not necessary throughout shooting. We felt like it was maybe even one more element that could make people n uncomfortable. So that was intentional too, to like, not just go like, let's get, all these grips and all yeah. these lighting people, like we kind of did that on purpose. Yeah. yeah. And it's definitely, you know, have, we've had some experience with larger crews, um, much larger and to steer that ship, you got a big ship to steer it, you know, to be open to us bouncing ideas off of each other and making changes and yeah. maybe we should do this or that. It's just a, um, it's a whole nother animal and, and you can, sometimes the larger crew will actually hinder you from getting a, a product that is more, that is better or, yeah. or is more appropriate for, yeah. for, you know, what the subject matter is and what the story is that you're trying to tell. Yeah. 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 Especially in documentary filmmaking and especially in the interviews that you just mentioned. Okay. Last question. The distribution of the film. Um, and how that went, um, that was that a choice, like, did you always, was it always the plan to go for, um, uh, film festivals first and then bring it out online? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I personally pushed that, um, sort of from the beginning, my experience sort of 
um, in like the end game of projects uh, or passion projects in the past um, was a little bit more on like trying to get out to the film festivals. And I had this idea that that was, um, that was sort of like where this was going to have an impact, which in the end wasn't actually the case. I, we did get into some festivals and that was really great and still like I'm glad that we did that. But I think I had an idea that the festivals would have more of it, like more of the life of the film would take place there. Um, yeah. When it turns out it was actually um, online in the mm -hmm. end, after the festivals when we posted online that it truly became uh, more spread out and, and found a bit of an audience. Yeah. It's definitely, it's, it's, we, we began to realize that even with, even really in what festivals are and even for, we knew from the beginning, we said this isn't really, we're, we're not exactly sure what this is. It's this yeah. blend between this narrative and they're kind of reenactments, but they're not really reenactments. Like yeah. we're not actually having somebody narrate exactly what's happening and, and seeing a real person that yeah. looks just like that person or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it is still, there's still the very like documentary side. And then it's a, subject matter that is it's more of a resource which i think was was michelle's sort of hope even from the beginning it's more of a resource it's more of a gift to people mm. in the world than than um something that we could ever sell and and or may, maybe we could but yeah. we it, it's not it's not really the type of piece that it was mm. and so um and even in an, in a theater watching on a screen um it has a different impact than somebody who's maybe experienced something like this or um, doesn't know a lot about it. The, the impact of sitting on, on your couch at home, watching it on your phone or on your computer uh, yeah. by yourself, that is uh, actually more of an appropriate space for yeah. this type of piece. Yeah. So, yeah. Which, yeah. So we're dissecting it later, realizing yeah. why it, what yeah. the, why we're the still... impact was so much greater online. Yeah. We're still in that process because it's been about a month since we posted it and we're yeah. trying to, we're trying to figure out, okay, like what worked type thing. Yeah. But so, so does that change your perception of what is a good film festival film and what, what should be online? Does it, is there a learning? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because literally right before we posted it, I attended a, a film festival here in Calgary that was shorts. And in the middle of that screening, there were some documentary shorts. And I realized there that like, oh, I think in the festival world, they're looking for very more traditional documentary, very like interview subject matter like that that what we what we perceive as like a mini doc that's what they're looking for and what we did was kind of outside of that that box and i think that that was one of the reasons that it didn't get as much traction whereas online um there's this potential like ryan said there's this more intimate connection that people can have with it um and then i think i think that for me for sure change it because now it's sort of like okay i think that when it comes to festivals there's this, it, not everything goes. I think that there are certain formats and types of films that will work. And then something like this, where it is a little bit more personal and intimate, for sure, it, it, you know, online was the right, for sure, the, the best place for people to connect with it, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we also had this idea of the, um, of the raw interviews. That was a big oh, yeah. part of the online piece was in the end, we had all these hours of interviews and these deep stories that some, we, we had one gentleman who had never shared the story of losing his sister publicly in any way. And we thought, oh, we don't want to just put these on a hard drive. What can we do? So, so the idea came up to just take all those interviews in a pretty raw, uh, un, uncut way and, and place them on the website with a film so that someone could watch the film and then they could choose to dive into an individual person's story and hear about them, which was a huge, yeah, which was a huge part of it in the end as well. I think that was a big uh, part of the online decision making. I think a big part of, of uh, at least for me, like I think that there's a lot of, there's a lot of power in listening to somebody's story and their experience and people who are open to just share what they've been through um, is a very uh, powerful thing for somebody who is maybe experiencing something similar uh, or going going through it. And it's not it's not even in hearing 
oh, all, all the nice, like, like, like having everything tied up in a nice bow. It's just, just hearing that you're not alone. There's something that's very healing about that. And I think that that is really where our, where we realized we can get, we can connect with this because this is, this is something we, we can very much get on board, represent these people in, and, or not represent them, but, but give them this sort of little bit of a platform um, to just yeah. share their story. Yeah. Uh, we, we can certainly do that. Yeah. And so even if, even if our connection with it wasn't quite as direct with, with grief in that we haven't experienced the loss of somebody super close, like a lot of these people did, yeah. um, that felt like something we could get really excited about is just giving, letting these people share. Yeah. And so that became a big reason for why we put those interviews on the, on the website as well, because we didn't get into any specifics in the film. And so it's actually, there, there is something about being able to hear maybe more specifics of somebody's full journey yeah. that is helpful. Yeah. So. And it, it kind of adds to the truthfulness of your story as well, because, mm. well, if I wouldn't believe that w what you were doing was truthful, then I could basically look at the, yeah. the raw, yeah. what, what, raw interviews and see like the whole background about like, right, right. It's not just something that you've cut in a certain way that, that kind mm. of works, but it's like, there's a, a, a real nice base to the, to the actual, like a big anchor. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's a great, great point. That's a really good I point. never thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. 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 When I saw it, I was like, oh, shit, I wanted to make that. Ah. Right? It's like one of these projects where you go, ah, someone did a really good job there, you know? Yeah. Um, oh, cool. And, and just like the whole approach and, uh, and how it all blended together. Because I think one of, my, one of my biggest fears would probably be that the fiction part wouldn't work. Mm. So you come to the to the point where you have like your interviews ready and then you have to kind of make sure that everything you reenact, even if it's not re a, like uh, a true story of what someone says, I would still feel pretty insecure about like, how do I get that to work in a way that, you know, my audience will will just buy into it that it will it will have a certain kind of flow yeah, and yeah. i think you really succeeded in doing that because i i think that's a really it could it could have been you know yeah not it like, could not work. Oh, yeah <laughs> it could have been a failure yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. that would well, have that's, been my my yeah. biggest fear yeah totally. yeah that's definitely i even said to you once we went once we went public and there was this incredible reaction I said, I feel like there's a weight for me that's been lifted off just yeah. because of the fear that yeah. we have 12 people who have shared this story. We have all these, all these crew that have been involved yeah. in, in creating this thing that's very personal. And if it's bad, yeah. that just sucks. Yeah. You know, like it yeah. really yeah. is, it really would suck for, you want people yeah. to be proud of sharing their story yeah. and proud of it. And, and so, we're just really, you know, that seeing those interview, the people we interviewed sharing it and, yeah. and the responses from, from uh, their communities and stuff like, stuff like that was just great. Yeah. 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 But yeah. it was in the back of our heads for sure, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's throughout just... and we felt confident in it for sure. But, but there was that little voice going, man, I hope, I hope this is still something because yeah. you dissect something to a certain point yeah. too. And then you go, okay, I hope, I hope it's, yeah. I, I hope, hope it we, this suck. was right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. It's this huge responsibility that you're carrying. It's like, it's not only your creative, like, uh, responsibility on the line, but it's also just the stories of all these people that you kind of have to respect and you never know how people will react when they see yeah. themselves. Yeah. So that's, that's also a big thing, I guess. Yeah, yeah it def definitely so. is. And, and we also had to, you know, recognize that our motives were, were to represent them well, and we were going to do the very, very best that we could. Yeah. And they offered to be in it. Yeah. And so like, it's okay. Yeah. You know, like, like yeah. trust, j kind of trust yourselves, trust them. Yeah. And, um, and, and we, cause we, uh, there were times where we got, we get very like stuck on is, is this, what's this, how's this person going to feel if we cut this or we cut that or, yeah. um, and we had to just kind of let that go and go, they, they're into it or, or yeah. hopefully, you yeah. know, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, it shows. It shows. Cool. It's cool. It's great. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, thanks, thanks man. Guys. Thanks for reaching out, and uh, yeah, that's great. 
it's nice to be able to talk yeah. about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We spend a lot of time, like your questions even, it's like stuff that we've talked about a lot between mm -hmm. ourselves. So yeah, it's, uh, it's the stuff it's, it's like, this is what I want to do with this new series that I'm trying to create. Um, is like, there's a lot of these things that, well, you can now discuss between the two of you, but like, I'm in this for a lot of projects, you're in this on your own, like, right. That like yeah. for a lot of people, that's the, the reality of, of this job. Yeah. It's like, you're, you're not having a big crew. You kind of just have to right? you have like a bit, a bit of help on, on your left and on your right, but, but it's like, it's mostly you and you're in your own kind of funnel. And it's sometimes, you know, I, I, I find it really enlightening to, you know, to hear like your stories and go like, oh yes, I completely get where, where you got, you know, stuck or like the types of discussions you needed to have in order to get this project to, to succeed. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that's my hope is that um, this will bring that type of discussion, especially on a website, like, because we're going to post it on RedShark, which is now mostly technology based, but they have a big, big filmmaker community that just need, really wants to see more of this type of content. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's a, that's definitely a big, I mean, again, in our discussions, like with the, the way that the, that tech is now so good, you know, the cameras are so good you yeah. you need to start approaching things differently than just getting a pretty image and and that's the stuff that's going to stand out yeah. you know yeah um, yeah because if you look on vimeo like I, you know if if you have anxieties don't don't look at it oh, because you'll go yeah. mad right? well, like, we, everything we is have beautiful spent, we, we have, have spent anxieties hours on that subject <laughs> alone it's crazy that's, it's horrible i know yeah. it's yeah. a it's a huge thing yeah i mean it's crazy i just to throw another this week I was just at a, at a small documentary festival here in Calgary and we were speaking with a director whose doc got into Sundance and he still, he said like, Hey, like I still am like experiencing this, like this anxiety seeing other people's successes. Like there's this, uh, yeah, this like spiral that it can put you in anyways. Yeah. That's a huge, it's very, I don't think it's talked about enough within the world of like, Maybe not necessarily um, the the creative world, but even in filmmaking, I feel like that's a hugely under addressed thing. Yeah, but so. that's, it, it makes sense because the whole medium in itself is um, it's you're looking at the final picture, right? Yeah. yeah. So you don't yeah. look. You're you're basically not looking at all the uh, the work and uh, and the anxiety and uh, and the difficulties and the stuff that didn't work. Yeah. You're just yeah. looking at. Look, look what I've made. It's yeah. like, it's like yeah. the final image. Yeah, totally. totally. It's no different than anything else. Any other sort of self-criticism of like, you know, you, you judge yourself, your, yeah. your insides with other people's outsides, right? That's, yeah. it's very similar when it comes down to, um, you know, online Instagram, Vimeo worlds, you know, how, how we judge ourselves compared to others. Yeah. Okay, thanks guys for your time. Oh thank man, you. thank you. Thanks, thanks so much. Thanks for reaching out and even to like hear that it affected you is just, yeah, it's great. That means a lot.